narcissists thrive on confusion. They make it very difficult for us to see things clearly, understand things clearly. And as long as we are confused, we are vulnerable. Today, I'd like to share with you a few diagrams that make it easier to actually visualize what's happening when we deal with them. And once we visualize, it's easier to step outside of the game that they're playing and get control back. So if you're ready, let's jump in. I'm going to use a very simple model to explain how it is that we function with people and others and what it is specifically with narcissists that make it difficult to function. If we take two people, the two people have ways of thinking about things and they also interact with each other. Normally, when it's two healthy people working, the people are relatively honest and they do something, they act a certain way, and then they get a certain amount of feedback from the other person. And based on this feedback, they can decide if they want to adjust the way they function, what they say, the way they think. So for example, if you say something to someone that the other person perceives as being rude, you can assume that what the person really means is that they found it rude and you can decide if you think that it is relevant feedback and you want to change something. Or maybe the person is actually trying to gaslight you into believing it is rude because they're trying to manipulate you. So what typically narcissists do, which is really disturbing, is they are very good at shining the spotlight down onto one person. And as long as we're in the spotlight, they can focus on all of our flaws, faults, mistakes, and anything else that we do that makes us believe that Whatever feedback we get, which is negative or unpleasant, is actually deserved and is due to us. Of course, in any situation, there are flaws, but there's also, you know, positives, good intentions, different side of the story. One of the things narcissists are very good at doing is focusing only on the worst possible interpretation. And they pretend that any other occurrence, any other explanation doesn't exist, doesn't make sense. And they're just going to cherry pick whatever it is they want in order to come to their conclusion. This is one of the ways where when we start criticizing ourselves, we think about things and we say, well, they have a point. I mean, I, I must agree with some of the criticism that's being said. And so we're doing a lot of introspection regarding our level of responsibility to whatever unpleasant situation it is, um, is there. A notion here could be simply that in any situation, both people bring positives and both people bring negatives. And what normal healthy people do is they look and they sort of see if it's a plus, minus, or sort of what the balance is. What narcissists do is they highlight, they focus only on the negatives negatives of one person and their own positives. And they pretend that the negatives don't exist, the other person's positives don't exist. As long as we're feeling vulnerable or we're trying to be fair, and especially if we believe that the feedback they are giving us is valid, we're going to focus on ourselves and how we can change ourselves and what we should think and what we might need to do differently. So one of the tricks here is to take a step back from what's happening. Lock off the feedback for a bit. We might just say, you know, you might have a point. I need to think about it. Before we go any further, I need to think about it. Once we do that, we gain a bit of space. We can start thinking and we can check whether what's being said, does it make sense? Or are we simply gaslighting ourselves? For this, we need space because otherwise the person will keep sending us information and we don't know if it's relevant. One of the tricks, of course, is to gain a bit of space. The other trick is to flip the spotlight around and shine it onto the narcissist. When we do this, we're looking for a few factors. We're looking for contradictions between different thoughts that they have when they believe two simultaneous, two separate things at the same time, which are contradictory, and especially contradictions between their thoughts and their actions when they don't add up.
This would be the case with someone who says, for example, I was making this up, someone who says that they are conscious about their health and the person drinks sodas. A normal person would be able to admit some level of hypocrisy. Narcissists don't do that. So a normal person might say, yeah, I know I shouldn't be drinking sodas, but you know what? It's once a week. I enjoy it. That's my vice. Overall, I'm very conscious about my health, and this is one exception. And most people would say, well, you know, okay, fair enough. It's okay. We don't have to be 100%, 100% coherent all the time. Narcissists instead will, will, will not concede that they are being somewhat hypocritical or contradictory, and they will instead try to attack. So one of the tricks here is focus on the contradictions between the words and the actions or contradictory actions. This would be the case with someone saying that they are trustworthy, but admitting that they lied. So you can't have it both ways. I mean, you could say, I'm trustworthy, but it's Troy did lie in this instance. You know, fair enough. Toxic people will justify the lies. You know, I did it because of something you did. Otherwise, I would not have done it. My responsibility is zero. It's 100% your responsibility. Now that I think of it, let me jump into this. I think it's a rather important point and that's often misunderstood. I come, I do another full video about this because it's really important. I'd like to talk about responsibility. Responsibility is often misunderstood as being something that is binary. It's either zero or one, which is the same as saying, I either have 0% responsibility or 100% percent responsibility. This is virtually never the case. When people try to make you believe it is the case, they're gaslighting you. When people try to make you think in terms of 0% or 100%, they're gaslighting you. These are people trying to manipulate you, trying to make you vulnerable, because they are trying to control the way you think and the outcomes you have. In most situations, we have some responsibility over what happens to us. Let's call that X percent. I don't care if X is 5%, 50%, 99%. I don't really care. It's somewhere between zero and 100. What matters is on the one hand, what is my responsibility? And on the other hand, what is not my responsibility? The part that is my responsibility is something I can work on. However small it is, it might just be 1%, 2%. If it's something I can work on, it's something that's under my control. The part that is not my responsibility is part of life. It's part of the world. That's just the way things are. It's not under my control. It's important for me to understand what part is under my control and what part isn't, so I can target my efforts on this part and try to increase the percentage I can control. The way narcissists work is they will always claim that they have 0% responsibility. All of this is not theirs. So anything they do something bad, they're going to blame you. They only did something bad because of something you did. They just responded. It was automatic. They had no agency. This, this part, that's my responsibility, is the part that is my agency, that which I can control. So one of the ironies with narcissists is they claim that they have no agency, but if you ask them about it, they claim that they do have agency. So they can't, they can't have it both ways. Either they are completely passive, they've got no agency, they're not in control of anything in their life, or they are. But they see things in a binary way. It's either one or the other. In reality, we all control part of what happens in our life, not all of it but enough of it to make a difference. So when someone says that, for example, they cheated on you because of something you said or something you did, that's not the case. This is them hallucinating the reason why they chose to do it. They might have felt justified and vindicated. They might say, well, I cheated because you cheated. It's not that simple. They did it because they wanted revenge. They wanted revenge because they were hurt. They were hurt because you did something and they thought it was a smart way to do it. You know, which is the truth. But then sometimes they use shortcuts to come to come to this. If they took ownership and they were honest, they would say, you know, I did this because I made a stupid decision. I was angry. I was resentful. I was vengeful. And this is why I did this thing. 
when we talk with these people, it's really important to be focusing on what is really their responsibility, what is not their responsibility. And one way to avoid getting caught in their logic, as I mentioned, is to shine the spotlight on them, their logic, their contradictions, and block anything. And if they try to throw it back and say, but what about you? You did. We block it. We go back to them. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.